Welcome back to the post-game show presented by the Maroon Club. Every gift matters every year. Join the Maroon Club today. We've got our highlights. That means we've got Mike Joseph. Well, some of the highlights in the first uh, half were pretty much all uh, the Harvard Crimson. And uh, you know, started off, and the quarterback did a nice job. This is a fourth and four play. They decided to go for it. You see Fisher right there. He's going to pick up the first down. Lafayette stiffened, and that came the field goal by Flesher right there, the 3-0 lead by Harvard. And Lafayette kind of battling back and forth, struggling to get their offense moving. But Harvard really had some good plays, and, and uh, Parm came up big today. Philip Parm made some great plays, the knockdown there. He came up on a beautiful play here on a bubble screen. He made some excellent plays, but this play, I think, kind of broke Lafayette's back. You know, they were outmanned on the outside. The freshman Parm making two good plays, and then this play not turning the ball back inside. A 78-yard, really a two-yard throw and a 78-yard run that time by Fisher. And then you're going to see Paul, uh, Paul Stanton right here. He's going to go up the middle for 43 yards. And at that point, they had that 17-0 lead, and that carried over through halftime. In the third quarter, you're going to see right here, I was just going to hit Ronecker in the back of the end zone right there, a good tackle uh, by Smalley, but a little double move, a great protection in the pocket by that offensive line of Harvard. And then Lafayette with a little bit of life here. Again, the freshman, number 16, Philip Parham, picks off the bubble screen. He's going to take it in the end zone. That was the only way Lafayette scored so far in that game. It was 24-7 at this point. But Philip Parham, watch him again here. A quick look out. He's had this play a couple times today, and this time he takes it away for Fisher. So one for Fisher the other way, and this one goes Parham's way at 24-7. We went into the fourth quarter. Remember, at this point, Lafayette missed two field goals, a 41-yarder and then a shorter field goal, which really uh, would have cut the lead probably in half at that point. In the fourth quarter, you know, Lafayette kind of uh, did some good things right here. You're going to see the quarterback right here, a pump fake, and then I thought was his best throw of the year to get that ball in the corner to Ross Sherman. Ross Sherman ran the wheel. He ran hard today, Ross. He caught the ball out of the backfield. He was a lot, a lot of Lafayette's offense, but uh, just a little bit too much and uh, too late for Lafayette. They're going to lose this game by 10. And interesting for Harvard. They'll take on Princeton next week. Princeton is favored to win the Ivy League, but they were favored in the poll by the Ivy League coaches by just one point as Harvard was sitting there in second place. The last time Harvard lost a football game was against Princeton last year in triple overtime, 51 to 48. That had to be one of the more entertaining games in history of the Ivy League. So there'll be a little revenge factor next week as Harvard has to go to Princeton to take on the Tigers at one o'clock. Lafayette, as we mentioned, they're one and one in the Patriot League. They're hoping maybe somebody can knock off Fordham and they can run the table in the Patriot League and get themselves no less than a co-championship. It'll all start with Holy Cross. It's homecoming. I'd like to see everybody out at Fisher Stadium next week. If you can't be there, you can join us live at 3.30. And Frank Devani is working his way over and he will chat with John Leone. Thank you, fellas. Uh, Coach, when we uh, saw Harvard up here, as usual, in Boston on the schedule, you always put a circle around it. This is a heck of a football team. You guys had your moments. I thought the game plan, and I'm echoing Mike Joseph's statement, the game plan was solid. It's a matter of execution. When you break down this film, what are you guys going to be looking for? Well, it's going to be the self-inflicted pain. You know, seven drop passes, giving up a play, a touchdown, a third and 20, you know, those things, and then one long run. Other than that, you know, we battled in there, but again, we got wide open guys, and then, you know, hey, unfortunately, we're breaking down up front. We still got some penalties, despite all the things that we did to hurt ourselves. You got a shot. I mean, we got a shot to go down, score, try an onside kick, and, you know, unfortunately, couldn't do it. And again, anytime you lose, you got to credit your opponent. They're a heck of a team, well coached, but, uh, you know, as, as, as bad as we did to ourselves, we had an opportunity there, and that's the frustrating part. The frustration arises from the things we're doing to hurt ourselves. Seven drop balls are inexcusable. That just can't happen. Uh, we got a number of people hurt again. I'll have to see who's left to take on the league run. That was my next question, Coach. It seemed every other play, someone else was coming off the field. And, uh, you know, Matt Maley was uh, probably the busiest guy today on the sideline. Well, it sure seems to be the way things have been the last couple of weeks. But uh, we'll battle through it, and uh, next man in. You uh, spent a little time with your team. Do you mind sharing just a little bit of that was? Coach, I have a suspicion that it had something to do with the second half of the season is about to begin. Well, certainly no secret now. It's, it's all conference games from here on out. But every game is important, and you want to win every game. We want to go home 
our last game on Fisher Field for our seniors. That's significant as I went over, and it's all about Holy Cross and that preparation. Nothing else matters anymore. I told them to get this out of their system and uh, go eat, get in the bus, and let's go home, prepare for Holy Cross. We'll get ready, and we'll see you at Fisher Field next week, Coach. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Philip Parham, the young freshman. Uh, okay, Philip, let's let's do the bad news first. You got to take us through the 80. Uh, you got to do this. You got to take the good with the bad. A little uh, swing pass out here to the side. It's two on two. Tell us what you did and what you might do differently next time. What I did, I couldn't see him, so I was trying to play cat and mouse with him. I should have just stayed outside. That's exactly what Mike Joseph uh, told us. As a freshman, you got to force him back to where the field is. But that's a heck of a receiver. Now the good news. I'll tell you, it's 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 sometimes all or nothing for a cornerback. Uh, to put a freshman uh, here in this stadium against this football field, you came up big time. Talk us through your, your evolution and, and, and the jump from last year to this year. Uh, last year, I was started to lead my team to semifinals. Came in this year to try to work hard and earn my spot on the field. Now, there were two plays. There was the interception that you jumped the route, got the six. But was it the same play that you kind of got caught on when it was an out and up? Was that you on that side of the field? Well, I don't remember. It probably wasn't. Okay. But as I said before, you know, uh, it, it was a tremendous uh, effort defensively. I really thought the key to the game was for our offense to keep you guys off the field. But uh, what was your mindset as a team, as a defensive group coming into the game? You got to get the ball out the running back's hands. Make the quarterback try to beat us. And you did that. Great job today, and good luck next week against Holy Cross. All right, thank you. Great. This side, Brandon Bryant. Brandon, okay, now i got to get this straight. Are you the mini maniac, or are you the tooth chipper? <laughs> I've been called both. <laughs> it changes up from time to time. And, you know, you have to be standing down here on the sideline to understand why. But, again, we just talked to your, uh, you know, your classmate over here, a freshman who came up big today. Talk about this, uh, uh, this group identity, uh, the freshman class as a group. You guys are emerging more and more playing time. Uh, how does it feel? It feels awesome. It's it's great to come in and feel like you're needed and feel like you can contribute, but the upperclassmen have done tremendous as well. You know, when you guys were watching film of Harvard, uh, we know that this is a football team that runs the ball for an average of 200 yards a game. You know, by all standards, you guys did a good job kind of containing them and giving the offense a chance. Did you have that mindset while you were out there? Absolutely. That, the run was the main thing we wanted to stop. That was our main priority throughout the game. Now, talk to you. Don't have anything to compare it to. This is your first under Coach Link's defense. Tell us what you like most about uh, the style of defense that he brings. Um, honestly, the thing I like about most of it is kind of it lets you get lets you be aggressive and because it's not overly complicated, but it still has some complexity to it. So it allows you to, to really hone your inst like go by your instincts and kind of just let everything in your body take over. Well, you're seven games into your uh, football career at the college level, and Brandon, for, from all indications, your instincts are pretty darn good. Good luck next week. Let's get on with the Patriot League. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Gary, uh, you know, the brain held off, and uh, we almost pulled it off. I think overall a pretty good effort. Execution, Michael, you can talk more about that. But, uh, hey, it's on to the Patriot League, and uh, let's, go, let's go get one next week. Back to you guys. Hey, John, that is indeed the key. It's Holy Cross next week. Nothing else to think about now except Patriot League. No, it's all about the Patriot League. you got to put everything in the past, and uh, this is a game where uh, Lafayette can build on it. And when you talk about execution, John, you talk about it's like making the routine plays. you got to make the routine plays. Well, hopefully going into the Patriot League, we'll do that and we'll run the table. All right, we want to thank all of you for spending time with us in Austin, Massachusetts with the Harvard Lafayette football game. For Mike Joseph, John Leone, the RCN television crew headed up by Rick Geel, we thank you so much for spending time with us. 24-14 Harvard, the final score this afternoon. For all of us, I'm Gary Laubach. Goodbye, everybody.